Well, you want another GB Studio video, and here we go. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to Modern Broadcast. Well, you guys have wanted to take a look at GB Studio, so here we are once again. This time, a lot of commenters have mentioned that they want to know how to navigate the shops. Uh, what can we do to make this possible, to buy and sell inventory and gain items, lose items, yada, yada, yada. So I'm gonna do my best to tackle this issue in this video and uh, hopefully it's not terribly long. So here I have already uh, made a little shop. Uh, I got a couple of guys in here and we have our vendor. Here's our player and a couple other actors just to kind of fill the shop up to make it not look so empty. But nothing is done or nothing is set up yet with this. So um, I just changed the animation speed to go five because it was a little bit slow on the walking. So that's pretty much the only thing I did. And then just kind of got things ready to go here. So first things first, uh, what you're gonna wanna do is set the initial balance that your player has. And you'll do so with variables. Now, right now we don't have any variables set up. Our player has no money. They're just a shell. And so none of these you can interact with. There's nothing that works. The only thing that I did is here at the door is if you enter in here, it says there's nothing out there. Basically, you just have to stay inside the shop for this tutorial. Let's go ahead and set up our initial variable. So let's go ahead and type in variable. And as we see, we have a ton of different variables and that's what a lot of this will be. So what we wanna do is we want to compare a variable. So do, 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 do. so we want this if variable compare with value. So if we're going to do, let's rename this. Let's go ahead and rename this. Let's just make it easy. Let's make it initial money set, right? So when this scene first loads, we want to see if we already have our initial money. If our player has any money, any cash at all. Initial money set is equal to one, we want the true path to do nothing. So this means that the player already has their initial money. Now, if you see here, we have an else, then we want to go ahead and click this. We're gonna add event. And this time we're gonna set a variable. So variable set to value, we'll click this. We'll come down to variable one. Let's rename it and let's call this layer money and let's make it a hundred dollars. Okay, then we wanna add another event and we want to set the variable and variable set to value come down initial money set one because if it's set to one nothing happens so the reason why we're doing this is let's say we program another scene outside of the shop right each time we come into the shop it's going to run this initial script and we don't want the player to just keep getting their money reset to a hundred dollars each time they reload the map so with this here it's going to check if initial money is equal to one meaning that they already received their first hundred dollars then it will do nothing it will not change their value however if they had not received their value their initial hundred dollars then it will give them one the 100 and then set the value to true okay now when we load this up we're gonna have a hundred dollars so how do we check that well, we can program a button to tell us, or uh, let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. This is an invisible actor here. And since we can't interact with this actor because he's behind a wall, we need an invisible actor here that we can kind of talk to the in-between. So even though it's going to look like we're talking to him, we're actually talking to this invisible ghost actor right here. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add event. And I'm gonna display dialogue. And let's go ahead and say, welcome traveler. You have, and we're gonna go money sign. He, we see here, money sign player money here. So it will tell us the amount of money we have. And let's go ahead and just say units. It's a little broken. Okay, that's fine. So now let's go ahead and test that out. Let's make this a little bit bigger. There we go. So here we have our shop. If I talk to this, welcome traveler, you have a hundred units. Basically what the dollar sign does is it pulls the value from that variable 
and will display it on the screen. So you can do many things with this, where hit points, or in this case money, just a variety of things that you can show and display in just kind of like an easier way to do it. Uh, especially if numbers are gonna be changing. So if we talk again, we still have 100 units. Let's go ahead, and I'm gonna add another scene. And instead of that just saying there's nothing out there, we're gonna have that change scene. We'll have it come in here, and we'll add another trigger here, in which that change is seen backed in here. Now, hypothetically, when we leave and go in here and come back to here, we should still only have $100 in our inventory. Let's go ahead and hit play. So the scene just initialized. Going to make it big again. Go ahead and talk. Welcome traveler, you have 100 units. Okay, let's go ahead and walk out. Let's come back. Now, since the scene just initialized, we should still only have 100 units. Perfect. All right. So now that we have that set up, I guess we wouldn't know unless it reset, right? All right. So to verify that this indeed will work, because I realized that when I did my little test and we came back, it says 100 units still instead of saying 200. So it's not adding, which is great. But what if it's resetting? So what I did here is I went down to this trigger and I said it costs $5 to leave, pay, and then just local uh, variable, yes or no. And if the local is true, so if they said yes, it would subtract five from player money and then change the scene to three. Now, when we come back, the new number should be 95. So let's go ahead and test this out. Here we are in our game. We should have 100. Perfect. Let's go ahead and start to leave. Yes. All right. And come back and it should be 95. Perfect. So it did not reset the 100. Uh, which is great and we now have 95 units so the next step here is we now have a way to see our money here but let's set the shop up as an actual shop the shop has no idea how much money we have so what we'll do we're going to change this to welcome to my shop would you like to buy or sell okay so now when we interact with our ghost avatar here it's going to say welcome to my shop would you like to buy or sell we're going to do multiple choice. We'll just do local one. We'll do buy if true, sell if false. Okay. So now we need an if statement. If true, we want local one. So that's what we made this. We can even change this to buy, sell. And it'll change that automatically. So if true, so if we choose buy, we then want to list. Let's see. There we go. Display menu. We're going to do shop inventory. And we'll do potion or playing card. You can add more if needed. If there's a bunch of items. But we'll just stick with the two. Just make it easy for now. Then we need to do another if. So if buy, uh, shop inventory is true, which is one. So potion, we then need to compare, or we first we should add text. Good choice, okay. So we have that a potion costs 50 units. Now we need another if statement, and we need to compare actually. So we need to compare if variable compare with value. I keep scrolling that down, I need to scroll this. So we need to do if player money is greater than or equal to 50, because that's how much the potion is, a potion costs 50, what then? We need then a math, function player money we need to subtract a value we need to subtract 50 we want to make sure we can't go negative so we want to clamp value between 0 and 255 right then we also want to add whoops variable increment increase by one so we're also going to have a potion right so each item in the game will also have to be a variable our potion is going to increase by one now if we don't have 50 we're then going to display you don't have enough money. Oops, we wanna make sure that's in the right spot. And that's comparing after we chose potion. You don't have enough units. Now that was a lot. So let's go ahead and test it out. Gonna make this big again. Let's talk to the shopkeep. Hello, welcome to my shop. Would you like to buy or sell? We're gonna click buy. So here's our choice, potion or playing cards. We're gonna do potion. Good choice. A potion is 50 units. Oh yeah. We should probably have a confirmation. So we don't know if we have a potion or if we do, if we don't. What we could do just to confirm that it worked is we could do it twice since we made it 50, right? So potion, good choice. Potion 50 units. All right. So there's 100 and you don't have enough units because we, we couldn't complete the transaction. We forgot to put a confirmation message and also have the player confirm that that's what they want in case they accidentally push a different button so here we at least proved that it's counting down that hundred so let's go ahead and clean that up a little bit we'll click here we're gonna go all the way through it's a potion 
Okay, good choice. Let's take out good choice. Let's instead say, we're gonna say potions cost 50, right? You have that, and we'll say units. Then we should add a choice. Oops, I don't want the avatar, go away. Oops, we'll insert an event after. Do you want to buy? We'll insert event after, multiple choice, and compare again with value. Oops, let's delete that. Let's make it easy to follow. We'll say compare if variable is true. There we go. So if it's true, then, oh boy, where'd it go? Then we compare the player's money, gain a potion. Let's have the shopkeep say, thank you, come again. Now let's try that. Oops, so walk up to the shop, walk into my shop. Would you like to buy or sell? I'm gonna say buy. You wanna buy a potion? A potion costs 50. You have 100 units. Do you want to buy? Yes, no. We'll say yes. Thank you, come again. Now, do it again. Potion costs 50. We have 50. Do you wanna buy? No. There we go. Okay. So, there we did it again. Cost 50. We have zero. Do you wanna buy? I'm gonna say yes. You don't have enough units. So that's a very basic and very simple way of at least getting a shop to work. And then we'll have to tackle as far as showing up in your inventory. So you know how what you have and how to navigate that. All right, real quick, I created a way for us to check our inventory. This is a very basic, again, bare bones, a method to do so. You can definitely expand on this, get more creative with it. But what I have done here is I have attached script to select button. So if we push the select button, it will say you have X units, however many units we have, and you have the following items. And it's going to check. Now each item you'll have to list here to see if it has this item, if it's greater than zero, then it will say potions and the number. It'll ask, do you want to use a potion? Multiple choice, yes or no. If yes, it will then decrease the potions by one count. Now, if we don't have any items, which right now we're only working on potions, let's display, oops, put that in the else folder. You don't have any items. Why do I keep saying times? There we go. You don't have any items. So if we don't have any potions, it's gonna say we don't have any items. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit play. Make this full screen. Now if I push select, we have 100 units. We have the following items. We don't have any items. Perfect. Let's talk to our shopkeep here. We wanna buy a potion. Yes, thank you, come again. Now, if I push select, we have 50 units. We have the following items. Potions, one. We wanna use a potion. Yes, check it again, no items. So it's not a very clean way, especially if you have a game where there's a lot of items in the inventory uh this is just very basic again but you know it, it is a way to check what you have on your person and what you could do is expand further on this this is just very basic rudimentary inventory system buying system up next we are going to work on the selling system so let's go ahead and switch over to that all right now to set up our selling system so we have if buy sells is true because true is buy false is sell so we're going to scroll down here all the way at the bottom of our long tangent and else we then need to check to see if we have any items that are available for sale so we can say what would you like to new dialog box sell so we need to compare if variable compare with value and the only item that we've set up so far is the potion so each item you will have to compare and put in each item if we have potions greater than zero then we want multiple choice here so we want to display multiple choice and we'll list this as potion or return then we want to compare if variable is true we want to decrease decrease the potion by one say thanks here's 75 units or that's more 45 five dollar charge you buy him for 50 he buys them back for 45 then you want to do a math function player money add value you want to add 45 to that or else if potion is not greater than zero go to else add event and say you don't have anything to sell all right let's go ahead and test that so again, right off the bat, we can talk to our guy, click buy or sell. I'm gonna say sell. We don't have anything, so it should kick out and say, nope, you don't have anything. Perfect, what would you like to sell? You don't have anything to sell, okay? Let's go ahead and buy a potion, yes. All right, now that we have one, we can sell and we can do potion or return. Just go ahead and sell it this time. Potion, thanks, here's 45 units. Now, if we push shift, we have 95. So we are short five units because he buys them back for 45, 
but sells them for 50. We don't have any items. There we go. There is very simplistic and very rudimentary inventory, shop, sell, buy that you can implement into your game. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribe. Hey, be sure to check out the Kofi as we are doing the zines. October's edition is just being finished up and we're about to order prints. So be sure to subscribe to that uh, in order to get your physical copy of the zine today. Have a great week. Take care.